Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back for another OPTC video, and in today's video, it is that time of the month again where we rank the legends over here on the global side of the game. So about a week ago, we got the release of three new legends that we are going to talk about today. We have Magellan, V3, Blackbeard, and Moria, as well as the six plus of Onami. But before we continue, what you guys see on the screen right now is my tier list as of last month. So this was last month's tier list. Tier list. We're going to quickly touch on the characters that I have already ranked and just see if there's any changes because I do want to make some pretty drastic changes actually. But before we continue, as always, this is my personal opinion from playing both versions of the game. Um, I do have all of the legends in the game as well, so I have tested them out in harder content and stuff like that. And I've sort of got a feel for their teams and whatnot as well. But just be mindful that this is my personal opinion. And shout out to OPTC tier list and the database. Links will be in the description if you want to make your own tier lists. If so, make sure to link it. I'd love to check out your tier lists. Uh, and make sure to use the database. It's the easiest place to do team building as well as see what characters uh, can do. But if you are today enjoying today's video, make sure to go down there and belt the like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, hit that big red subscribe button too. But we're going to take a quick look at the criteria that I like to use when I am ranking these characters. This is it on the screen. So the big one for me is value. So how valuable is that unit? Is it going to be viable in content that is, that's like future-proof? Or is it going to be put onto lots of different teams? Obviously, power, how strong the unit is as a captain or their special. Their utility, where they can be sort of put onto different teams. Where their special can be um, viable within the content that we have on the game. Their types, what um, color they are is a big, big factor. And obviously, that changes per month. Their types, whether they're, uh, sorry, their classes, whether they're free spirit. Obviously, free spirit is very, very good at the moment. Driven powerhouse are very good at the moment where... Um, some of the other classes like, say, Fighters and Strikers, they have dropped off significantly this month. Finally, we're looking at flexibility, which means you can just sort of slap them onto any team, how many teams they sort of work on, and uh, what, where they're best used. But let's quickly take a look at last month's tier list and see if anything needs to change. So I do have a bunch of tiers here. We've basically got the ST Captain, ST Sub, AT Captain, AT Sub, BT Captain, BT Sub. Everything around sort of B and above are all very, very good units that you will see play here and there, whether you choose to use them or not. Next, we've got the PvP tier. These characters shine the best that they can possibly shine in PvP. We then have the support tier. Usually what you are using these characters for is support. And then finally, you have CT Captain, CT Sub, which in my opinion, I wouldn't really worry about too much. Even some of the B tier Captains, B tier Subs, I wouldn't worry about as all the characters in A tier Sub and above can clear high tier content and they should be the characters that you do want to focus on. So let's have a quick look at last month's tier list. Like I said, we've got Enel, Hody, V1 Mihawk, Croc, uh, V1 Luchi, Usopp, Shiki, Sabo, Zephyr and 6 plus Robin. So I think this is fine. These tiers are fine. If you want to make an argument to me though, to move Hody up to B tier sub, I'll definitely listen. In my opinion, I don't think he's there purely because he only really deserves to be there on a Blackbeard team. And there's just going to be other units that can just do what he does better. Namely because that 90% damage reduction becomes a 2 times attack boost to driven powerhouses. But mainly what I use this Hody unit for where I would like to put him is actually in support. This guy, um, this guy is really, really good. He's been really viable in the last couple, like the last month or two with the particular content that we've had with the release of Akainu, with the release of all these really good powerhouse units. I've been mainly using Hody as support. But for now, I think I'm just going to keep him in CT sub. Um, you could definitely make an argument for him to go into... Um, what's it called? You could definitely make an argument that he can go into support though. And I think that's actually where I might put him because that's basically where I use him most. Um... I did drop Nami back to here, basically because I want to remove her, because we're going to talk about her uh, 6 plus. Next, we've got the CT Captain, 6 plus Sanji V2. We've got uh, Zoro Mihawk V2, we Nami Robin, V2 Jinbei, Marco, Robin 6 plus, Regular Lucy, V1 Big Mom, 6 plus Judge, Basil Hawkins, Original Tank Man, V1 Kata, Lace, and Dofi V2. So the big change that I want to make here is I actually want to bring... Nami Robin up here to B tier captain. Now, I don't love running dual units as captain, but their value being two classes, boosting two colors that are, well, in is still very, very good, as well as having a very good special, removing 10 turns of paralysis and being a very good orb booster for two classes, or colors, I should say, is very, very good. And the reason I want to bring them up to B tier captain is I really want to bring this Nami down to C tier captain. Now, this Nami is still really good, but she's only really viable as a... um as a hybrid captain for stuff like Kid and Zoro. But if you have Kid and Zoro, you, you're never really using this Nami. You could probably argue to me that she's a BT sub. She gives color affinity. She's an orb booster. 
she has a decent captain ability, but I don't really run this Nami that much. Mainly you run her for paralysis removal. I think she removes burn as well, but never really use her for that. Um, so this Nami Robin is probably just taking the cake there, but we'll put her into B tier sub for now because, I mean, I do think she's better than some of these um, B tier subs, but at the same time, looking at stuff like uh, Lucy and stuff, uh, I think she probably deserves to be there, if not lower, down here at C tier captain. Uh, if we quickly look at the supports, we've got Hody now, we've got V2, 6 plus Luchi, Akainu, Neko, Cavendish, 6 plus V1 Sanji, we've got Buggy, Barto, the two Laws, both very good supports. The original tank man, 6 plus um, Luffy. We've got uh, 6 plus V1 Zoro. Sengoku, V1 Shanks, and Boa. All these guys have very, very good supports. Uh, I actually use them quite a bit, especially like Neko, Akainu, uh, Hody I've been using a lot lately. Bardo's amazing on Robin, especially um, when Japan comes out and we get that Straw Hat Legend. Most of these sort of legends were, that go on Luffy and Robin and Zoro and all those types of characters are going to work really, really well. The next tier we have is PvP. So PvP, these characters really shine in pvp like obviously there are some captains like some captains up here in s and a that are very good in pvp too but these particular units this is where you will use them most now enel is a bit of an exception enel in my opinion is probably an a tier captain or maybe a b tier captain probably a b tier captain to be honest mainly because you have to hybrid up to make him good but where you are using this guy most is in pvp so i do want to keep him in this pvp tier but definitely look at him up here in b tier captain I've got um, 6 plus Rayleigh. He's another unit that you could probably make an argument that would be a bit higher. This PvP tier is just sort of like, it's not really ranked anywhere. It's not better than the C tier captains. It's not worse than the B tier captains. It's just where these units shine the most. Rayleigh's pretty much an A tier sub um, or even a B tier sub really. But um, again, most of the time that I use this Rayleigh is on PvP. We've got the two Fujis, very good in PvP. Uh, 6 plus Dofi V1, probably one of the best PvP units in the game. Uh, Dogstorm's pretty good in PvP still. Frankie's probably dropped off a little bit. I probably use Frankie more as support now than anything. Um, but he's still good on uh, a lot of different teams in PvP. Kazaru 6 plus, amazing PvP unit. Magellan V1, incredible in PvP for those dex teams. And then Kuzan, Ace, and Whitebeard are all very, very good in PvP as well. On to the B tier subs now. So this is where we get into the crux of the video. Now we start talking about some of the big guns and what characters that you can look at leveling up if you've got the resources. So we've got 6 plus Beige, amazing for Driven and Shooter teams. Driven and Shooter did get quite a big buff with Ace Akainu. His big father ability works great with some of these higher tier captains, namely like Katakuri, the super type. Uh, Nami's got a really, really good special, color affinity, orbs, paralysis, burn removal. Uh, this 6 plus Lucy, once he gets his limit break key, he's going to jump up, but for now he's a B tier sub. Giving an attack boost over two turns and then not being able to remove it with like blow away effects is really, really strong for three very good colors. Well, two amazing colors. One that's how you going, but still works. You've got um, V1 Shirohoshi. The reason V1 Shirohoshi is in B tier sub is just because I wanted to separate V2 Shirohoshi, V1 Shirohoshi, and Shirohoshi. I don't think she's as good as the other two, so that's why I'm putting her in B tier sub. But you could probably make an argument that she's on the same tier as V1 uh, Shirohoshi Mancherry. We have V2 Bow uh, 6 Plus, Free Spirit, Carl from Booster, very, very good. We got Super Type Smoker. Super Type Smoker is one of those ones you could probably argue is a B tier captain, but for me, he's just raw damage. And, like, for me, it's, there's no utility whatsoever. Um, there's no real viability. He makes a good sub on quick teams if you're looking for a good attack booster or an orb booster, but I'm never running this guy as a captain. I would rather run Laffy as a captain than Smoker. That's how little I think of Smoker. Uh, V3 Kuzan, amazing sub. Again, you could probably make him a. Um, an A tier sub, but uh, I don't really use him that often. Again, uh, orb boost color for you for three colors, strength, dex, and quick. If you team up with um, the V3 Akainu, you can do some crazy things, but I don't think he's anywhere as good as V3 Akainu is. Brook, I can't uh, disrespect what Brook can do. Uh, as a captain, you can get that Rudo's revive mechanic, so you could argue that he's a B tier captain, but the most place that I use him is a sub to get uh, healing, to get all orbs matching, and to get that threshold. Kung Fu Luffy's a funny one. I like Kung Fu Luffy a lot. Dex don't have that many attack boosters, so that's why I put him in B tier sub. He's a great option for you guys when you're running Dex teams. V3 Rayleigh, when he works, he works, but finding where he works is the big issue. Giving a two times attack, two times orb to fighters and cerebrals is great, but you can't use any other specials in the turn, so it's a bit of a yikes, but where he does work, he works very, very well. Namely in Garp Challenges, actually. I found him really, really good in the 10-star Garp Challenges. We have the V2 Admirals, still great captains. With their limit break keys, they're even better, but they have dropped off significantly when we look at some of these other units. V2 Shanks and V1 Judge. V2 Shanks I really like still a lot. He finds his way onto a lot of teams, um, a lot of color-based teams. He's a great attack booster, chain booster, and then Judge has great utility with bind removal as well as being a nice chunky orb booster as well. Moving on to BT Captains, we did move uh, Nami and Robin up 
uh, mainly because they can be a 4.5 times captain, mainly for int, so you can hybrid them up with a lot of good int units. Um, they are cerebral as well, so you do have that option with something like uh, Sanji Pudding, because they are a dex unit as well. Uh, V1 Blackbeard 6 plus when, when you hybrid him up in the right way and you can get his team going He's very very strong. He's very very good at clearing content that has a lot of defensive effects very similar to carrot But I do think carrot is just a little bit better uh, Or a lot a bit better. I should say we've got um Which one's this dead bid is it v2? Yeah, v2 white bid or quick bid uh, 6 plus he's very very strong for powerhouse teams V1 Katakuri 6 plus is amazing um, You can hybrid him up with some crazy stuff like Mihawk and run some crazy int teams and he can do something that, like no one else can do. So with that can do like that delay. So he's very very strong and it works well with his special as well. Um, original Snake Man, the super evolution from the Tank Man we find in the C tier captain. But this guy's definitely a B tier captain. I just really wanted to separate some Luffy's, uh, namely the Snake Man's and the Tank Man's. So that's why he's in B tier captain. I do think Stampede Luffy's a little bit of a better option for good team builders. But this guy can just you can use him as a captain. You can hybrid him up with a lot of different options and. Honestly, he's probably an A-tier captain, but just looking at some of the other characters in A-tier, like, there's just a lot of other units that I would rather be using, and a lot of other Luffy's that I would rather be using than this particular one right here. But he's still very good as a sub, so A-tier sub is probably the highest I would put him. Halloween Shanks. Halloween Shanks is a funny one. He's a great hybrid option, uh, but he's a color affinity booster to Cerebrals and Slashes. You're namely building int teams around this guy because of his captain ability, but he can work really well as a sub on stuff like Rodan teams and whatnot. Downside is, there's just some better shanks that i would rather be using um we've got v2 blackbeard i don't like v2 blackbeard he's just too slow for my liking but as a sub especially on a moria team this guy is actually really really good and because of that i kind of want to move him up into a tier sub but the big thing is is like it's only good on a on a moria team like that's really where he shines so his value is not very high his special is really, really cool. He's got a great Sailor ability to get cooldowns as well. And getting that four times attack and orb boost is actually really strong if you can get it. If you don't have another better int uh, leader, then um, he's probably your go-to. I do think Katakuri is just better than him in all aspects as a captain. But if you hybrid the two of them up, they were the original dream team and uh, they still work very well together. Super Type Sabo. Super Type Sabo is a funny one. Super Type Sabo has been growing on me a lot lately, namely because of JP. And I've been using him a lot in stuff like Kazuna. Um, he can do things like the chain multiplier buffs and then get a very high chain multiplier with stuff like Verse Ace and uh, Original Snake Man and stuff like that. So he's a pretty good unit, but I still don't think he just jumps anywhere above B tier captain purely because he needs a lot of help. Uh, Dex Sabo. Dex Sabo just got a 6 plus on Japan, and because of that, I'm actually going to drop him to B tier sub. He can still do some wild things, getting up to a 4.5 times captain, but like you're always running this guy as a sub. You're never really using him as a captain. Uh, he makes recovery and tandem orbs for free spirit fighters and shooters matching as a sub as well. He's got a great special, three times chain lock, and a very high orb boost as well. And then his six plus is a little bit different, but we'll talk about that once it comes around. We've got uh, V2 Katakuri. I'm not a fan of this unit, but I'm very keen to see what they do with a six plus on him. I would love to see that. Carrot. Good old Carrot. When Carrot works, Carrot is so quick. Her utility is great. Her, like, Captain Multiplier is a solid. She's about to get a six plus, and because of that, I am going to leave her here. I think once she gets her 6+, plus, um, she is going to jump. But most of the time, like, she can clear a lot of content and she can be hybrided up with a lot of very good units. But I just... She's not my go... She's not my go-to, you know? Like, and she's more of, like, a, a, a an end-game player sort of character that has a lot of good units at their disposal. And for that reason, I want to leave her in BT Captain. Now, if you have a box like mine, if you have a box like Chowsu's, or if you have a box like Toadski's, then sure, this unit is a AT Captain. Definitely. 100%. But... For most players, they don't have that kind of luxury. So that's why I think she's a BT captain because when she, when you can make her work, she works really well. But otherwise, it's a lot of big brain strats. We've got Jack here. Jack's a um, XP boosting captain, rainbow captain. Got a great limit break plus actually too. So um, I think he's fine in BT captain. And then finally, Wako. Wako's got some really good hybrid options now with um, Moria especially. A lot of healing. Um, they are a low multiplier, but they provide a lot of utility with their switchability. They have a lot of value because they are a rainbow captain as well. So BT captain for me is definitely a stay. Onto the AT subs now. We've got Garp, Chain Locker, um, HP Cutter, Special Bind Remover. Amazing unit. Great support as well, actually. So, But definitely an AT sub for me. I use him quite a bit. 
Uh, V1 6 plus Jinbei removes 5 turns of damage reduction and defense up, as well as giving some matching orbs and doing damage, which is the big one. So if you've got him on an in team, you can start to use stuff like the Halloween Law support. You can uh, use any sort of support that does that needs to deal damage, or if he rotates orbs, because he's always turning his orb into a matching orb, you can abuse that as well. So a really, really good sub option. Super type Kaido is a funny one. Um, I don't love this unit. Like, he's a good captain, uh, but in my opinion, he's just he's not as good as Sugar. Like, and I would rather run Sugar. And we're gonna talk about Magellan in a second. And I don't believe that he is anywhere near Magellan as a sub. You can definitely see some viability with that two times damage, but he just gets nerfed too easily with normal attacks only and full immunity. Onto uh, V2. A VV Rebecca, I do love this unit a lot. Like, I really love the Cerebral team. But, I don't know. Just the constant having to switch and that sort of stuff makes them a little bit clunky. But, they've got a very good special, great switch ability. Um, but, yeah, that, that's just sort of where I stand on them. I do think that Sanji Pudding, like, if you hybrid the two of them up, are the best Cerebral captains in the game. Uh, I do, actually do think they probably are the best Cerebral captain. So, for that reason, I'm probably just going to put them up into A tier captain. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm going to slide them into AT captain. I don't know why they're in AT sub, actually. I always use these guys as captain, and then I use uh, Sanji putting as a sub now. But we're going to talk about that in a sec. We've got Mihawk Prona, amazing sub sub support. Um, that conditional boost that, like, no one else can do is great, as well as two times damage against that. And you can get that off through full immunity. So they've got great utility. They can be put on a lot of teams that they're cerebral. They're driven as well, which is great for the new units. So very, very good uh, sub. Island Crew, I love Island Crew. Island Crew is one of, my, like, one of the most underrated units, in my opinion. Uh, especially if you have like the the Hody support, which um, worked really really well in the Hody Garbs challenge, giving up to a 2.5 times attack boost as well as their switchability, giving that base stat boost is really 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 nice. I really like that a lot. We've got Pudding now. Pudding can roll back specials. She can stockpile specials. She can do something that no one else can do. It doesn't give you an interrupt as well, which is another beautiful thing about this Pudding. Really really good legend. On to V1 Shira Sherry now. They have amazing switchability. They have a great special that can remove 10 turns of like two debuffs of your choice. And even on Japan, this is still very, very viable. I do like V2 Shira Sherry a little bit better than them. But otherwise, I would put them in like S tier sub. Because um, they, they, they're, just, they're just great. Besides the new Straw Hat Legend on Japan, no one else can remove like just a chosen buff, which is excellent. We've got Neko and Inu. They're pretty solid. Cerebrals are... Very good, but I am going to probably drop these guys to a B, B tier captain. They're still a really good option for um for cerebral teams if you are missing stuff like the the V2 waifus and whatnot, but and Sanji Pudding. But you mainly use them as a sub, if anything, and I just don't think they're as good as some of the other subs up here, namely like Jinbei and Garp and, and Kaido and stuff like that. On to the next sub, we've got Cracker. He's about to get his 6+, plus actually. Um, over here on the global side of the game. And once he gets his 6+, plus, he gets a little bit better. But for now, he's just an A-tier sub. He, um, he, he's sort of just been aging quite gracefully. But when he gets his 6+, plus, he's going to get access to a few more supports, namely Daifuku, the uh, limited rare recruit support unit. So once that happens, we'll talk about him a little bit more. Tessero, one of my favorite units to run. Driven got a huge buff, obviously, within the last two months. So he's just getting a buff as well. He's a quick unit, so he works well on the quick PvP team. Um, there's not much else to say about Tesoro, to be honest. Making or matching orbs, doing damage, just great options for supports. He's a 3.25 times chain lock, and he has a very, very good support himself. So, very, very good unit. Finally, we've got Bardo Cavendish. Got a huge buff with the Driven upgrades. Um, I love running this unit on Driven teams, namely versus Kainu teams. Giving damage reduction and healing is great, because you want to take damage with a Kainu. Uh, I don't think they make their way into S tier sub just because of a Kainu or Mori or anything like that, but they, um, they're still very, very good. Let's move on to AT captains now, and this is where things start to get juicy. So we already spoke about V2 Shiro Shiro. We got Bullet. I did drop Bullet in last month's tier list, mainly because um, I just don't think he's as good as some of these SD captains anymore. And you have to really hybrid him up. As a sub, he doesn't really give too much viability. And if you're ever using Bullet, you're pretty much always using him as a captain, unless you're trying some real intricate stuff. It can be done, but he's mainly a captain, being rainbow, super effective against all types. Um, strength, int, and quick. Booster, I believe, which are three very good colors as well. And having that rainbow super effect against all types is just awesome. Uh, super type Zoro, uh, easily the best uh, dex captain in the entire game. You can hybrid him up with Kid, and that's pretty much why I've got Kid here as well. Both of them work exceptionally well together. If it was me and I had to choose which one to run, if I had to run one double, I would always be picking Zoro every day of the week. He's got utility in his captain where Kid doesn't. Um, so Kid, I could you could easily make an argument to drop down to A tier sub. Because you're normally using Kid as a attack booster on a Zoro team. But if you are missing Zoro, you can easily run Kid as your captains. That's no issues whatsoever. We've got um, the Sweet Generals. They're a great uh, strength leader. 
and um, they are despair removal. I think is their is in, in, in their captain. Any char character that has utility in their captain is pretty much always going to find their way into A, if not B tier captain, depending on their multipliers. But the sweet generals, the downside to them is you can't use like cracker and smoothie because they're in the name. But other than that, they're pretty solid. You just do need, do need to kill things to get the five times captain. And they are best sort of hybrided with stuff like Odin or versus Kaido or Bullet or something like that. But still a very good unit. If you need to get rid of Despair, 10 turns of Despair, and you need to run a Strength Team, they're usually your go-to. Their super typing isn't amazing, but it was worked really, really well against the Hody um, Garb Challenge. Next, we've got the uh, the two main Halloween Slashes in Law and Mihawk. These guys work amazingly together. Despair removal with Law, Paralysis with Mihawk. I do actually prefer running uh, Mihawk as Captain most of the time. But when there are no normal attacks only, obviously Law is always your go-to. Law's the orb booster, Mihawk's the attack booster, Law gives the clock buff, Mihawk gives the perfect buff. So you can get this over two turns. It works great for the Enel stage. It works great for um, all the Garbs challenges, really, and some high-end content. Sugar, Sugar's one I dropped from last month's tier list. I just don't think she's an ST captain anymore. She's definitely an A tier captain. She's easily the best unit for Kazuna next to Toki, but obviously Toki's on Japan. Um, whenever you're doing Kazuna teams and you need big damage, um, that uh, Sugar is definitely going to be your go forward. Next, we've got uh, V3 Akainu. V3 Akainu, um, amazing captain for strength, decks, and quick. The downside to him is if you bring a Cyan int unit, he basically loses his captain multiplier, which can suck, but he's got a very, very good special as well. Uh, 2.25 to those three colors, sets the defense to zero, and gives a two times conditional boost, or maybe 1.75. But when that works, the amount of damage you can get with V3 kind is insane. You can actually partner him up really, really nicely with um, Verse Ace and do some shooter team shenanigans, or shooter free spirit team shenanigans. And with the two of them, you have all orbs matching. Shout out to Chiaozu. Check out the man. He did a couple videos on that. Um, it was some really, really cool stuff. Super type Katakuri, really, really good. Getting conditional delay. Uh, as well as the conditional boost to that, two times attack boost for his team. One of the best int captains, but the downside is, is he sort of relies on being at low HP. So you do need characters to either get you to low HP or you need to sort of take shots. V1 Kaido is a funny one. Now, I spoke about this last tier, tier list. V1 Kaido, in my opinion, is an S tier captain when he works. He's always like your go to captain. It's very similar to like uh, Carrot as well. Like, if you've got the box of Carrot, she's going to be an S tier captain, but otherwise. She, she, she got to stay down here for now. But with Kaido, he would be an S-tier captain if he worked in all situations. But he just gets nerfed way too easily. Um, and you are relying on that end of turn damage. But Powerhouse is very, very strong. And you can partner him up with a Kainu, which is great. So um, still an A-tier captain. I don't think that gives him a buff. But when he does work, I do recognize that Kaido could be an S-tier captain or should be an S-tier captain. Komurasaki. Komurasaki is going to get her 6 plus very, very soon as well. Um, she's a great quick leader. Um, you can hybrid her up with like the new Magellan, which is really, really fun. She's got damage reduction. She's got healing. Two times attack, two times orb for quick and int units, which is great. Halloween Ace. Halloween Ace is a funny one. He's a pretty low multiplier nowadays, but he gets a limit break key. He's got it on Japan, and it's, a, it's incredible. Really, really strong captain. So because he has the special reverse and the special bind in his captain ability, I am going to leave him as A tier captain. If you're missing something like verse Ace, then you, are, you can easily hybrid him up with uh something like that as well so it works really really nicely next we've got stampede luffy again paralysis removal and i think he has despair removal in his kit so having two is really really good and because he's psy uh he's definitely going to stay in a tier captain on to jumanji now i think i'm going to drop jumanji into a tier sub mainly because i mainly use this unit as a sub i do recognize what they can do as captain but there's just so many better options for powerhouse captains nowadays you've got stuff like versa kainu we've even got um you've got moria You've uh, got the new Blackbeard. You can even use, like, put him on, like, Psy-based teams or Rainbow teams where he's basically just used for his switch ability and for his uh, paralysis removal. So, I do think he's probably dropped off a little bit. Powerhouses did get a very big buff. And I'm not saying that he's not a viable captain, but where you will mainly use this guy, like, is a sub on something like a Kaido team, you know? So, there's that. So, all right, so on to um, S tier subs now. We've got uh, 6 plus Corazon and 6 plus Rayleigh, two of the best aging units in the entire game. Both of them have amazing supports. They would easily find their way into support tier if they didn't have such good specials. Corazon can basically remove three turns of all debuffs and give you a monster heal, where Rayleigh removes seven turns of Bind, Despair, and Paralysis, also making tap timing a little bit easier. They've both got great Sailor abilities, removing special Bind and Paralysis by one turn for the crew by Corazon. And then every time someone else uses a special on um Rayleigh 
or on, if Rayleigh's on the team, he gets cooldown as well. V2 Shiro Sherry, they have incredible switch ability. Their special has great utility, completely removing paralysis, doing a lot of despair removal. They can give you overheal, which is just extraordinarily powerful, even on Japan. With the new Straw Hat Legend that released being super effective against all types when you're at max HP, this particular unit makes that unit so damn strong. This unit makes um, Wano Law even stronger as well. Germa, 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 Germa. I kind of want to drop Germa into A tier sub. Now, I love using this unit, and when he gets his 6+, plus, he's very, very good. Um, but the downside is, is his value on other teams that doesn't include Psy is a little bit of a yikes. They do become super effective in all types as a captain. They have a very good special that buffs themselves, and they work amazingly under something like Enel. So if you're running Enel as a captain, you always want to be running this guy. But sometimes the content sort of just... You, you just don't have room for them. They do work as a great orb booster for the team, but... Um, there are some other options like Wano Law. You've got, um, uh, well, actually, that's about it. Now that I'm actually looking at this, maybe they are an S tier sub still. You know what? We'll drop them to A tier sub for now. Um, just because, like, I don't see myself using them as much as I used to. Uh, but they will get a resurgence once they get their 6 plus, definitely. On to Odin now. Odin's an amazing sub for stuff like Roger. He's a great captain. He's definitely an A tier captain at least, but. Uh, he just doesn't sort of cut it in the ST captain like he used to. Um, well, he never really did, to be honest. He did and he didn't. He works great as hybrid with Roger, but that's that's where you sort of draw the line. You got Silver Mask, one of the best subs in the game. Four turns cooldown every time someone else uses a special. Attack boost up to 2.5. Full board of orbs through block orbs. He's a Sanji unit, so like there's not much else to say there. Luffy, Luffy Zoro. Uh, my, in my opinion, this guy is incredible. Like... Their value is insane. They've got a great switch ability. They've got a great special for free spirit and slasher teams. They're a Luffy and Azora unit, so you have a lot of very, very good uh, supports. Um, a very high orb boost, 2.75, if you are doing the whole um, TND orb thing, as well as a three times chain lock. Um, they work great in forests and end game content. So the downside to them is they are a Luffy and Azoro, but it also works in their favor as well. V1, uh, Viva Rebecca, probably one of the best subs in the game next to V2, Shiri Sherry. You guys know how amazing this unit is. 2.5 times chain lock, healing, orb manipulation, all that sort of jazz. Chopper, amazing special. Five turns, removal of basically every debuff in the game, paralysis. Um, and then gives you four, three turns of auto heal, I think. Um, and he's Chopper. He's just so goddamn adorable. Sub Koala, their switchability is great. 1.5 color affinity to cerebrals and free spirits. 2.25 attack to those classes and completely removes the orb negative orb buff, debuff which is still to this day the only unit that can really do that and uh it works so amazingly especially in like the hawkins forest this unit can just completely remove it and it works so damn well next we've got um prometheus zeus and big mom i'm gonna drop them down to a tier sub mainly because um their best position is kazuna other than kazuna you don't really use them too much elsewhere mainly because like verse big mom's a thing but I'm um, still a very, very good unit, just not an S tier sub anymore. Laffy, in my opinion, is probably still an S tier sub. Um, wherever I can use Laffy, I sort of do. Um, if you want to make an argument to drop them to A tier captain, that is totally fine with me. But for now, I still think they're very, very good. Um, they may, they work great as a captain, but they are a dual unit, so they do shine best as a sub. All right, on to S tier captains now. This is where we are going to make some drastic changes. We've got... Uh, Ace and Akainu, both of them are very, very strong. No issues with them being an ST captain. Five times captains for Driven Powerhouse and Free Spirit and Shooters. Their value is incredible because you literally summon for one unit and you get two. They're both orb boosters for their classes. They're both chain lockers for their classes. Like, they just... They work so damn well. And the fact that Akainu can get the burn ability off through immunity, where Ace can be a two times conditional boost for the same thing, it just works so, so nice. Sanji Pudding's one I'm going to move. I'm going to move Sanji Pudding into the ST sub. Like I said, I like to use um, V2, V2 uh, VV Rebecca as the captain for Cerebral Teams and then run this guy as a sub. Or I'll run like Sanji Pudding as my captain and then bring a friend VV Rebecca. But their ability to completely remove damage reduction and threshold is just like unparalleled unless you're looking at something like V1, um, VV Rebecca that removes defense up and damage reduction completely. Um, they are a five times captain in their dual form, but once again, they are a dual unit. So dual units just find that it's not very, very hard for them to put into S tier captains. Versus Big Mom Kaido, the same reason that we have versus Ace and Akainu here. You summon for one unit, you get two. They work great together, both being int and strength boosters, as well as Kaido being dex, Big Mom being Psy. In my opinion, I do prefer running Big Mom. I think Big Mom has a lot more value. But when Kaido works, very similar to V1 Kaido getting that end of turn damage, he's very, very strong. Luffy Sandy is probably the only dual unit that I'm going to leave here. And uh, yes, it hurts me to say that. 
But Luffy Sanji, they get the overheal mechanic as their captain ability. You can hybrid them up because they are rainbow. They work amazingly with stuff like Roger and whatnot. And their switch ability is incredible. Most of the time for me, I do use this, this guy as a sub. So for me, I think he's an S tier sub. But... You can't deny what this character can do. The downside is, is he's very slow, he's very stally, there's a lot of healing going on, and it just can be very, very, ugh, I just want to get this done sort of stuff. Next, we have Roger. Roger, in my opinion, is the best character on both versions of the game still, and he goddamn should be. He's the goddamn Pirate King, for crying out loud. He's a five times Captain Rainbow with his special, three times attack. He has the ability to, like, break the game. They want to remove debuffs, they want to do something to you. Roger just says no. Next, we've got V2 Snake Man. I think V2 Snake Man still holds his own up here. Uh, he's incredibly good. Attack boost and orb boost in one character, where you can, like, proc it wherever you want, is so damn powerful. All right, on to the big changes now. Shanks Crew. Yes, I'm dropping Shanks Crew. And yes, that hurts me a lot to do. Shanks Crew is still a great captain, and you can still hybrid him up with amazing, amazing, amazing units. And honestly, like, for me, like, I still want to put him up here in S-tier captain. I still use this guy a lot because of his utility and his captain. The special bind removal is incredible. He's got one of the best switch abilities in the entire game, but most of the time, I am using him as a sub. I don't think he's as good of a captain as these particular units. Even though he is 4.5 rainbow, he is a dual unit, so most of the time, you're looking at 3 to 3.5. Even with his switch ability, even that 1.5 times attack makes him like, what, let's just say 3.5 and 4. But I know that's not right because it multiplies into itself, but most of the time, you are using this guy as a sub. And he is one of the best subs in the game. Uh, three turns of a 3.5 times chain lock is, un is one, of one of the better specials is, as it can't be removed with enemy debuffs. One of Law's another unit I'm going to drop into S tier sub. I really rarely ever use this guy as a captain anymore. Um, I do think he's a very good captain, especially if you have V2 Shiri Shiri, but most of the time you're using him as a sailor. He has a very good sailor ability. He's got a very good special provided your captain is free, like a free, both of the original tags. So fighter, shooter, slasher, striker, and then, or, and or, fry, no, not and or, or free spirit, cerebral powerhouse driven but most of the time I'm using him as a sub and as a captain like all of these captains are just way nicer to use the last one is uh super type boa super type boa honestly for me is an s tier captain but there are a lot of better psy characters that i will be would be using she is probably one of, she still does in my opinion have the best super type in the game but roger is a thing and uh whenever you can run roger you're pretty much going to run roger over her so I'm going to drop her to AT Captain. I do believe that once, if you believe you can get the Mera Mera ability off, she has some of like the best value in the entire game. Um, and for me, like I would still keep her as a S tier captain, to be honest. I, in fact, you know, I'm going to keep her as an S tier captain because I do think that she is miles above these other characters here, uh, ma mainly because of that Mera Mera ability when it works. But when that Mera Mera ability doesn't work, she isn't an S tier captain. So I guess we can agree to put her in AT captain. So that's the changes that I really wanted to make in this tier list. Um, it is a little bit annoying, actually, now that I'm looking at it, because, like, it's not going to be even anymore. But, nevertheless, they, they were the big they were the big movers and shakers that I did want to change. The only thing that I'm, like, not happy about is Shanks Crew, and, like, that's I feel like that's just my bias kicking in. But, like, I do just want to leave him up here, because he's my favorite unit in the game, still. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to leave him there, just because I want a little bit more room in some of these other tiers. But, just... Just, just leave me alone, okay? Alright, so first of all, we're going to talk about 6 plus Nami. 6 plus Nami got an absolute monstrous buff. She became a color affinity captain. She gets, um, she still has her uh, defense down and her conditional boost. Uh, but she gets color affinity in her kit. Her captain ability becomes very, very, very good. Her support still stays the same. And honestly, if you want to make an argument to me that she's an AT captain, I'll accept that. The thing is, the thing is, I would rather run the uh v2 waifus as a captain i would rather run komarasaki as a captain for that reason for me personally i'm going to put her as a b tier captain you can easily make an argument that she's an a tier sub but i still don't think that like she's going to get run more than stuff like kaido when kaido works um nami can like i said give color for but color is just not that amazing um she got like i said she got a huge buff to her captain ability and stuff like that and if you really 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 want to argue with me uh, we can put her in A tier captain, but then I would uh, argue to drop Komarasaki down. Now, for me, I like Komarasaki's kit a little bit more with damage reduction and whatnot. So for that reason, I'm just going to put Nami in a B tier captain. I'm not I'm not saying that she's not really, really good, but like, in my opinion, like she's just as good as Carrot. Like in my opinion, she's she's just as good as the V1 Snake Man. Like she got a huge buff, but she didn't really get that much of a buff to sort of warrant her to be up where some of these higher tier units are. Next, we've got Magellan. Magellan's automatically going to go to A tier captain because he has paralysis removal in his kit. You guys know how I feel about that with um, with captains. Any captain that has some sort of utility in their kit 
is going to find their way into A tier captain. His super typing is probably the only thing that lets his character down. It does completely remove poison, which is going to be useful in stuff like Dofi 2. It was very, very good for the Hody Garbs challenge, but other than that, it doesn't really see too much play unless you need the healing aspect. His special, though, is very, very good. Two times color affinity to rainbow, I'm pretty sure. And then a 2.5 times attack boost if you can get the poison off. He has double special activation and has um, utility as well with blind and burn removal. So, very, very good captain. Uh, in my opinion, he's the best quick captain in the game. Um, and I would hi I would much rather run Magellan than run something like Nami. You know what I'm saying? On to um, Moria now. Moria is another one that's a bit of a funky one. I do like Moria a lot, and I think Moria is an A tier captain. Um, I don't think that Mori is the be-all or end-all, though. Um, you know what? I kind of want to drop Komurasaki to AT sub. That's where I basically use it. She's a very good captain, don't get me wrong, but I just, I want my tier list to look nice. You know, I want it to, like, not have carryover. So, for that reason, I'm just going to drop Komurasaki to AT sub. When she gets her 6 plus, she might jump up, but for now, AT sub. She's pretty good, though, like, but at the same sense, I just don't think she's as good as some of the other characters in this tier. But let's talk about Moria. That's why we're here. Moria can get a lot of healing with, her, with his perfects. He's a 5 times captain, provided you have matching orbs. 4.5 times otherwise, which is very, very good. He can heal when you kill enemies. And the fact that he's a powerhouse driven captain, you can use something like Verse Big Mom to actually use the Verse ability. And you can get so much healing in that it's not even funny. He's got a very good special 2.5 two time, times orbs, orb manipulation, and gives the threshold buff. On the next turn, you get 2.25 times color affinity to his two classes, Driven and Powerhouse. And it works very, very nicely. Under Blackbeard, he's Blackbeard's best friend. Ideally, you hybrid him up with Blackbeard because with Blackbeard, that threshold becomes an attack boost as well. So getting a full board of orbs, a 2 times attack, and a 2.5 times orbs, and then a 2.25 color affinity on the next turn. With the Magello ship, you can lock your orbs as well. Like, it just works so damn well. Like, so damn well. But in my opinion, Moria out of the three new legends is the best. But I was very, very impressed with Magellan. On to the third legend, though, we are going to talk about Blackbeard. And Blackbeard, for me, is a BT captain. He's a dual unit that just wants to be a captain. And he's great when you get him in his dual form. And he can be in his dual form to up to eight turns, which is absurd. The downside is he's special. His special does not provide that much. A 1.0 chain buff and then extending attack and orb boost. Extending attack and orb boost has, like, never really been amazing. And for that reason, I do believe he's a BT captain. He's very, very strong, but he takes a lot of big brain strats to make him work. When you are in the Quake Quake Fruit, you do a 10% HP cut going through normal attacks only, which is great. And in Kazuna and stuff like that, he's going to see a lot of play. Definitely going to see a lot of play. But when you are in his Yami Yami Fruit, you actually take extra damage, but you get cooldown. Very similar to this uh, V2 Blackbeard. In my opinion, the two of them are pretty on par when it comes to like what they can actually do. The difference is that V2 Blackbeard is actually just an int booster, where this V3 Blackbeard is a class booster. I do like V3 Blackbeard a little bit more than V2 Blackbeard, but I do think that they are sort of on par with what they can do. Um, the switchability is great, gives him a matching orb through block orbs, removes despair and special blind, but the thing is, you want this guy to be in his dual form, and then you can't use that amazing switchability. So it's kind of counterintuitive in a way, uh, but once you're in his dual form, you lose all those negative effects, you get all these positive effects, and he is a very, very strong captain. But he has no matching orbs. That's a big downfall to Moria as well. They don't make any orbs matching, and Moria relies on those matching orbs. When Magellan is just like, if you're above 70% HP, you're a five-time captain, and you're all good. He, Magellan himself, provides a lot of healing where if you take damage, you can actually get healing back. Where Blackbeard, besides giving his cooldown so you can just stay in your dual form, it's kind of like, yeah, that's, it's good, but like... I just I would rather run like any of the units above him. Like if I'm running in teams, like the Halloween slashes are way more viable. Running Moria way more viable. And you guys will see that when I release the Blackbeard like Garp challenges. When this goes live, I think I'll pretty much have all of the Magellan stuff out. Um, and then I think I'll be releasing the Blackbeard stuff. Um, sort of just after this video. So you guys will see what I mean when you see those videos. Make sure to check him out as he's a lot of fun to use in some hard content like Garp challenges. But if you try and take him into forests, I've seen some cons do it, but like. It's a, it's a lot of big brain strats, and uh, it's pretty complicated. So that's going to wrap up the tier list for this month, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. They were the, my movers and shakers, and they were the new three legends plus six plus Nami on uh, the global side of the game. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Like I always say, there's no such thing as a wrong opinion, and I love to hear what you guys think about my opinions as well as hearing your opinions so we can chat about these sort of things and build a community. So... Like I said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to belt the like button for me if you're new to the channel. Hit the big red subscribe button too. But guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later!